Good evening, everybody. Welcome back. Last night, you guys talked about singles, trying to look for love, trying to find connection and dating stuff, right? Last week, we talked about ways to use dating apps. We've talked a lot about that lately. But people were telling me, and the poll on my channel said, the number one concern you guys have is that you are single and you're looking for a romantic relationship. So tonight, here we go. We're going to be talking about dating strategies that I know these are dating strategies that come straight from my coaching practice, people that I work with all the time. You guys probably know that I've spent 15 years training and working with people who have severe relationship challenges, shall we say. Some are very severe. Some are just that they don't have the skills, right? Some is just that they have never found the right person or they don't know how to attract them. So everything from severe cases to people who just need a little bit of help. I work with everybody. I worked for years as a licensed marriage and family therapist, helping couples. Now I work as the attachment specialist online. I have my coaching practice. I have all the stuff I do to help people. So tonight, dating strategies that I know work. Dating strategies that take my coaching clients from Adam, I'm lonely and I have not had a relationship in five years to Adam, here is my wedding photo from today. Thank you so much for making this happen. I just got another one of those the other day. So I love them. This is possible. I want to put anybody out there. I put your heart at ease. It is very possible to find real lasting love in this modern day and age. So thank you, everybody who's coming in. Drop into chat. Say hi. Let me know that you're here. Let me know if you are single, if you're in a relationship, if you're divorced, if it's complicated. Do me a favor and drop into chat and let me know. For everybody who's watching this afterward in the replay, drop into the comments and let me know. What's your relationship status? I want to get a feel for what everybody is doing right now, how everybody's living, what your challenges are. Again, thank you for following through on the poll on my channel the other day. Uh, I think it was something like 41 or 43% of you said that you are single and looking for a good partner. So, Caitlin, good to see you over there in the chat. Welcome. Always good to connect with you. Um, dating strategies, you guys. Let's dive right into this, okay? You know that I coach people on this. You know I help people on this. Here's the number one thing when people come in and they tell me, Adam, it has been a while since I found a good partner. I'm not sure what to do. I don't even know if it's possible anymore, okay? Hawk, welcome to see you over here. Listening while I finish up the rosary. Awesome, Caitlin. Love it, love it. Um, people ask me all the time. They come in and say, okay, Adam, I don't even know if it's possible anymore. Is it still possible to find love in modern world, in the modern dating market? Is it still possible? Yes, it is still possible. People say all the time, Adam, you've been married for 15 years. How could you possibly know if it's really possible or not? Because I have so many people that I help find that, that loved one in the last year, in the last 10 years, it's continuous. The number hasn't dropped off a cliff and all of a sudden nobody's really finding a loving partner anymore. People are finding loving partners. Is it getting more difficult to find them? Possibly. Has it turned from, you know, a needle in a haystack to a piece of hay in a needle stack? For some people it has. And in some places, yes, it's more like a needle stack than a haystack. Totally get that, you guys. But many of the same principles still apply or can be applied in a new way in this new world. Okay. Let's take dating apps for an example. Uh, a lot of my coaching clients come to me and say, Adam, I don't have people in my life that can help connecting me with people, right? The research shows that one of the one of the best methods for finding a loving partner, a, a real stable loving partner, is through family and friend networks. The research indicates this, backs it up, and it's it's always been with us throughout all of human history. Are dating apps here because dating apps are better than that method? Not really. Dating apps are here in, in a large part because people don't have family and friend connections much anymore that they can leverage and use to find a partner. A lot of people are more isolated, more lonely. So they turn to dating apps as that solution. It is the matchmaker for you that your family and friends could have been, right? Dating apps have, have stepped into that role for people that don't have it. And they're very convenient, right? You pop open your phone at any time and there's people on there that are looking for a partner, ideally. That's the, that's, the, that's the promise, at least, right? It, it has sort of become the Amazon for, for partners, the Amazon for people. So a lot, of, a lot of people, many people, are using dating apps. So it's not realistic to just say, stop using dating apps. And there's right and wrong ways to use those dating apps, you guys. So let me ask you guys, people who are over in chat, how many of you have used a dating app? Just pop in and say, yep, yes, something like that. Let me know if you have used a dating app before. 
Um, just want to get a feel for where you guys are at. If it's something I have, unfortunately, sounds like probably not a good opportunity, not a, not a good experience then, huh? Great and Gatsby. Good to see you. Welcome. Hawk. Nope. Okay. Yes. For 10 years. Ah, see the dating apps are designed to kind of cycle you, um, just to, to keep you coming back. They're not really designed to be deleted. Um, okay. There's right and wrong ways to use dating apps. The wrong way is this, and this is what most of my coaching clients who come into me with dating problems, this is how they use the dating app, okay? They open the dating app and they start flipping for people that make them feel something or they start flipping desperately marking everybody, hoping that one person will like them back, okay? They're not very selective, and if they are, it's all based on feeling. It's not really based on matching and real true compatibility. Okay. Uh, a lot of people use the dating apps like Amazon. I'm bored. I'm going to order something. I'm bored. I'm going to look for something that makes me feel good. Okay. They use it like DoorDash. I'm bored. I would like chocolate cake. Uh, even if they can't, even if with the dating app, it's harder to get chocolate cake. They like to look at chocolate cake and they like to place a uh, pending possible order for chocolate cake if chocolate cake chooses to respond in time. Okay, that's how a lot of people use those dating apps. They also use the dating app to market themselves like a product on Amazon. They market themselves like a product on Amazon. Okay, uh, this will make other people feel good. This will make people impulse buy me. This will make people click on me and impulse take me home. That's what people are doing. So it's a dopamine thing. They are using the apps with dopamine in mind. Okay. Keep that in mind. Here's what you should be doing instead. And really quick, I'm going to pop in and let you guys know, memberships support this channel. So click down there and check out memberships here on this channel. You get exclusive content. You get first priority in commenting. I greet you when you come in here as well. Um, you get first priority in chat. And this, the last piece of this live and every live that I do, I turn on members only chat where you guys get comments, questions. We work together. It's a community in here. So pick up a membership, support the channel or go to the inner circle. I would love to have you do that. It would really help me out. Thank you very much. Um, what you should be doing with dating apps instead. And when I have people come in for my coaching practice, this is what I teach them. This is what makes the change right here, you guys. If you don't make this switch, dating apps will continue being miserable. But if you make this switch, dating apps get a lot more efficient and a lot better. This is what helps people build real lasting relationships. Okay, you ready? Dating apps are useful when you treat them much more like a job listing and a resume post, okay? Not dopamine, serotonin. Serotonin is the right chemical looker. Serotonin is not addictive. Serotonin is long-term beneficial. Serotonin is a, a rich protein meal, okay? Serotonin is, I did a job well done, and it's going to last for a long time, okay? Serotonin is also satisfaction from achievement. There's a number of things here, okay? Dopamine is a quick, quick, quick hit. I want people to impulse buy me or I'm going to look for chocolate cake versus this. I'm going to look for somebody who can fulfill a good role for me in my life. And I'm going to show people how I fulfill the right role in their life. That is not dopamine. That is not Amazon, okay? Yes, there are people who cruise on Amazon looking for a tool that would be useful. There are. But the majority of people, the majority of Amazon listings and, and how sales often works is dopamine. Dating apps are not about sales, okay? Too many people go into sales. I have all kinds of sales <laughs> experts, people making a million plus dollars a year coming into my coaching. Sometimes those guys like huge sales figures and they are having just as much of the dating problem as guys who come into my coaching making $50,000 a year, okay? It, it, it's the same challenge and it's even worse if you're in sales because you are used to marketing for dopamine and to get quick quick achievements and quick yeses. It is not always, the sales, about finding the right fit. It's not always about taking that time to find and make the right fit, okay? So when you have your, your dating app open, okay, build your profile in a way that attracts the right person. Even if you cut from appealing to 80% of people to appealing to 10% of people. It is not about getting in front of 80% of people if the majority of them are not compatible with you. 
It's about getting in front of the 10% of people who are compatible with you. And this is a little bit more in line with better sales, right? It's not that you're not the piece of, you're not the chapstick at the Walmart checkout line. You are a high value item that very specific people are coming for, for a very specific reason to achieve something very specific. It's, you are the specialist uh, that somebody is looking to hire to fulfill that role in their life because they have a need and they're looking for you. Okay, if you're appealing to everyone, you're not going to find your person. Thank you, Rob Bernard, for becoming a member. I, I thank you so much for supporting the channel. I appreciate you. That is wonderful. I am going to turn on members only chat here in a little bit. You're welcome to throw your questions in at that point, and I'll be happy to help. Thank you so much, though, for supporting the channel. I appreciate you. Okay. Dating apps. So build your profile to appeal to the person who is looking for you. Number one thing you need to do. Archeon, welcome in here. What did I miss? We're rolling through the dating apps. We're rolling through dating strategies. We're doing that. The replay is available. So don't miss the first 10 minutes. You're going to enjoy it. Let's keep going though. Um, don't miss that members only chat coming up at the end in the last portion of this video too. In the last portion of this live stream tonight. Dating apps, guys. How are you building your profile to appeal to other people, the right people? And how are you building your profile to make people interview to be with you. Let me, let's ask us another way. Have you ever seen a line around the corner with a bouncer and a checklist at McDonald's? Now, have you ever seen a line around a corner with a bouncer and a checklist at an exclusive restaurant? You don't want to be McDonald's. Okay, you want to be the exclusive restaurant that is serving a very specific type of purpose and type of person. You want the right people in who are going to be right for you. So in your dating profile, what are you asking for? What are you sharing that you value? What message are you sending to the right people? Are you letting them know that you are at the same level together, that you value the same things? One big mistake that a lot of my coaching clients have when they come in is their dating profile is specifically geared to be non-abrasive, appeal to everybody, therefore nobody, and to be fun. Fun. I'm going to be fun. Everything is fun. By the way, maybe a committed relationship, but fun, right? That's the problem with a lot of dating apps. So when people come into my coaching practice, one of the number one things we do is we sit down and say, show me your dating app. They show me their profiles, hold up the phone or, or screen share, or whatever. Uh, okay, here's what we're going to do. What do you actually want? Who are you actually looking for? Many of them can't even articulate that. Okay, let's create an exact list of who you're looking for. So everybody at home, I recommend you sit down and create a list of the characteristics, the characteristics that will tell you that the person is the right match for you. Sit down and create a list of the characteristics you are looking for in a partner. Okay, this does not necessarily mean the physical pieces, the characteristics, their moral virtue, right? What they value, their life goals, what they're looking for. Do that. Gregory, welcome in here. Good to see you. What if you feel like you were not enough when meeting people? Definitely work on your attachment. That, that, that typically is an anxious attachment issue right there, Green Gatsby. Uh, that's one reason I built the attachment bootcamp course is to help people fix that insecure problem so that you know you are enough when you meet people. If you need help fixing that, make sure you check out my attachment bootcamp video course, which is on 20% off sale right now for the month of January. Let me throw the link in chat for you guys. Do not miss this sale. It is running through January 31st. It is 20% off. Okay. 20% off that course, that will show you how to feel like enough when you meet people. That will show you how to feel confident in yourself. And then you present with confidence. And then people see your worth. Because when you don't think you have worth, people believe you. Okay? Even if you have immense worth, people will believe you don't because you tell them you don't in not so many words. Okay? Okay. Number one, there's that. So fix that. Um, in your dating apps, guys, make sure that you are looking for the right person. 
that you are displaying correctly for the right person. If you need help with that, schedule a coaching session with me. I will show you how to optimize your dating profiles. I will show you how to fix that, okay? Single sessions for that, this way, chat's over here, are also uh, single sessions with me right now are 30% off coaching for until January 31st. You've got about a week. Sign up for a single session. Adam, put in the notes, Adam, I want to work on my dating profile and optimize this to find somebody, okay? I will help you build that. Other dating strategies, okay? Writing down what it is, the characteristics you're looking for, optimizing your dating profile for that. What are you doing in your life to make progress to a place where someone could look into your life and say, yes, that is the person who's for me. A lot of the guys who come to me in coaching, they have not really taken those steps. And they say, Adam, I haven't had a date in many, in several years, sometimes five years, sometimes 10 years. Adam, I haven't had a date in 10 years and I'm not sure that I'm ever going to. Okay. Tell me what steps you have taken to improve your life so that when somebody healthy looked at you, stable, you know, committed, looked at you, they would say, yes, that is the right person for me. Because you might accidentally be driving them away with your life that you're living. Not that you're a terrible person, that your life is bad, but your life could be empty. You may have no friends. It may look from the outside like you are not capable of a loving relationship, so they just steer clear. A lot of guys who come to me in coaching, I have my five-session dating mastery coaching package. A lot of guys come in, we do a full assessment on their romantic history, their attachment. Then we spend the second session not working on dating, but first working on friendships so that they have a foundation, number one, for life fulfillment. And they're glad that we do that, by the way, you guys. It's not like I, you know, I don't yank away no dating. They are glad that we are working on friendship because that's a huge driver huge driver of, of quality of life. But when you have good friendships, your chances of finding a good partner go up. Okay. Most people miss this. You might've missed the video earlier on my channel, a couple of months, a couple of weeks back, right? If you are lonely, don't look for a girlfriend, look for friends instead. You guys might've missed that video. I recommend you go back and look at that video. Okay. Very important piece of information right there. Vital Elements, good to see you in here. Welcome. Always good to see you. Thank you for coming in. Show me in chat, guys, people who are single. People who are single and lonely over in chat right now. Drop in there and let me know. How many close friends do you have? Just put a number in there, right? One, zero, 20. <laughs> How many close friends do you have? If you are single and you're kind of frustrated in the dating market, how many close friends do you have? And by close friends, what I mean is this. People that you can open up to with confidence. People who you can share your concerns with. People that share with you. Not just venting and complaining to each other. Finding solutions with each other. Enjoying each other's company and relaxing fully in each, fully in each other's presence. You respect each other, right? You have maybe good character together. Good moral virtue together. G close people that you trust completely or almost completely. Close friends. How many close friends do you guys have? Do e-friends count? Absolutely. If you trust them and you're close with them, by all means, throw those in. So, three single, five close friends. Okay. I have friends. I can talk that way. The thing, they're not that present. Okay. So you can kind of open up to them, but they aren't really reciprocal. Okay. Do you have, Ben, do you have any who are reciprocal with you? They're what I call 3 a.m. friends. There you go. Hold on, Huck. There you go, Huck. Haven't had a close friend in 12 years. The last one goes to me when she when I wasn't romantic interested. In. Ah, I hear that. I hear that. They are reciprocal. They're busy with their ah, yeah, okay. I get you. Um unfortunately, dating frustration often, not always, but often goes hand in hand with not having the kinds of close friendships that would encourage you and lift you and, and drive you to be a better version of yourself. Okay. You may need to invest some time. And a lot of my coaching clients need to invest some time into building relationships that encourage and motivate you to be the best version of yourself. Okay. If you have friends who encourage you to be the sweat suit, you know, pot smoking version of yourself, <laughs> probably not the best thing for your life. 
if you have, and you don't have to have friends who drive you relentlessly to improve, but if you have friends that you encourage each other to be the best versions of yourselves, your odds of relationship success go way up. I have seen this time and time again with my relate, my coaching clients. Some of the first work that we have to do is build them those supportive relationships and friendships. And when they do, all of a sudden their dating life drastically improves. So do not be shy about your friendships, you guys. Huge piece of advice. I did a live stream, I believe, last week. Might have been the week before. It's still on this channel, Finding Adult Friendships, why they're important. I've done a lot of work lately on friendship. Loneliness is something that I'm tackling hardcore lately. So make sure you go watch that other live stream or watch some of my videos on friendship on there. Um, invest some time in friendship. That's my advice. If you need help with that, again, I've got my coaching practice. Happy to help. I have three friends who know my true story, two I can call anytime. There you go, Vital. That's positive. That's positive. We're in sync. Relationship with friends, self first, then friends, then romance. That is exactly, I love that. That is exactly how I built my attachment boot camp video course. Same. We're in sync. First module is about building and cleaning and improving the relationship with yourself. Once you have that, you build those social circles that are going to really fulfill you and sustain you. And once you have that, you can use those social circles and that healthy self-relationship to move into the romantic circles and start building a romantic relationship with a good partner. You can't really do that until you have a great relationship with yourself and with other people, with your social circles first, right? Same page, Vital. Love that. Um, best dating strategies I can give you. Fix your relationship with yourself. Somebody asked early, Gatsby, I think that was you, right? What if you don't feel like enough? What if you don't feel good enough? How are you going to land a loving, stable partner for life? If you show up feeling and looking like you feel like you're not good enough, do you think they're going to say, yes, this insecure person is the right person for me to spend my life with. I will invest with this person. Or are they likely to go, hmm, you're okay, no judgment, but I don't think this is going to work. And they might ghost you. If you guys have been ghosted quite a bit by people that seemed pretty good, that might be what's happening. That's often what's happening, you guys. It really is. Um, no judgment. No judgment at all here. I'm letting you know that that is very, very often the case, that you have passed by many great potential partners because of your relationship with yourself, because of your attachment issues. You've accidentally driven them away. You looked not ready or not interested. Avoidant people, just the opposite, right? You will look not interested because you're so focused on staying safe or on stimulating the other person, but not actually connecting with them. So anxiously attached people and avoidantly attached people, both will do that. Several. There you go, Rob. That's it. And it's heartbreaking for a lot of people when they realize I have passed by so many great opportunities and they wonder they'll never get another opportunity. Look, there is always, if you're driving along the, the, the road, the frontage road along the freeway or the highway, and you're trying to get on the fast, fast highway and you miss one on ramp, it sucks. And maybe you have to drive a mile or two or a couple miles to the next on ramp. If you're out in the middle of nowhere, maybe it's 10 miles but there will be another on-ramp. The answer is not to freak out that there's never going to be another on-ramp. It's to learn to take the on-ramp when you see it. That's fixing your attachment and being ready for the next great relationship that comes along. Okay? It is never too late to fix your attachment. I have clients in their late 70s. I had a client with a terminal illness in their late 70s who came in to fix their attachment. We still fixed it and built them fantastic relationships for that last year of their life. So they were fulfilled. The people in their life were fulfilled. The, the, the things that had met, left them disconnected, left them in regret. We fixed those. Still possible, you guys. It is never too late to fix your attachment. And it can feel incredible, even if you've only got a year left with a terminal illness. So it is always possible.
Fix your relationship with yourself. Best dating strategy there is. If you need help with that, let me know, right? The attachment bootcamp video course to fix your relationship with yourself and with others is on sale for 20% off. My coaching is on sale for 30% off a single session. Coaching packages, all of those are available, okay? You guys know that I have a wealth of resources here on this channel. That's why you guys are here, right? With this YouTube channel. How can I be a member? Click down there on the memberships. There's a button down there that says memberships. Click that. Look at the links, okay? There's a couple of different options for memberships down there. Give that a push. You got, there's support the channel, which is great. You come in and you're supporting it. I love it. Thank you. All the way up to the inner circle where I show, share exclusive resources. Um, my inner circle, you guys are probably going to get a uh, picture of my baby when my baby is born. Um, due date was yesterday. We're still waiting for that. Could be this week. Could be early next week. We'll figure it out. Probably going to blast that out to my inner circle first because you guys are some of my biggest, biggest supporters. So thank you and keep an eye out for that. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome in here. Glad you're here, Amanda. Everybody else, thank you. Um, become a member. Please support the channel. I appreciate you guys. <sighs> Best dating strategy is to fix your relationship with yourself, then to fix your friendships. And if you can, your family relationships. Not If they're toxic, that is what it is. Be safe. But then... How do you talk to people, okay, on dates? One of the number one things people come into me for coaching on is communication skills, relationship communication skills specifically. How do you talk to somebody on a date? How do you ask them questions? How do you show interest? A lot of men on dates seem disinterested, and a lot of women don't relate to you or connect with you or get a second date with you because you look disinterested, because you're communicating wrong. You're very interested, but you're communicating wrong on the first date or the second date. Okay. Got to go. We'll catch the recording. Thank you, Rob, for supporting the channel. And yes, the recording will be up. Enjoy it. Let me know what questions you have afterward. You are a member, so you get priority in the comments as well. So I'll catch you up later. Curiosity is sexy. There you go, Vital. Curiosity, learning, asking questions, really engaging with the other person. Communication skills are vital. You can be the healthiest, richest, most awesome human being on the planet. And if your communication skills are garbage, you're going to have a hell of a time on dates. Okay? You're going to have a hell of a time on dates. Gatsby, I think it may be a member. Well, you're a supporter. My members have those green... The green names with the little star next to their name. If you check down there on the bottom, it says memberships. You click that. There's three levels. Select a level. You'll be a, you'll be a member. So thank you. Thank you very much, Gatsby. I appreciate you. Um, communication skills. There we go. <laughs> communication skills. It's the number one thing I can teach you. And, and they don't stop being useful. They are absolutely vital for getting into a relationship, for building an attraction with a great partner. Thank you, Gatsby. Support the channel. There's a member. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. That is very kind of you. I'm about to, in a couple of minutes, turn on the members only chat where you can share those questions, those comments. I'll be right there with you. So thank you. Um, communication skills never stop being useful. Okay. You display them in the first few dates. You really utilize them in the first year of the relationship, testing compatibility and building the long, long term connection. And then they sustain your relationship forever. It is almost impossible to sustain a long-term loving relationship, like my 15-year marriage, for example, without great communication skills, sharing your needs, helping each other, sharing that love, words of affirmation, right? Solving problems together, talking about problems together, being curious and learning about the other person continuously as they change and grow. Communication skills never, ever, ever, ever go out of style. And they are absolutely mandatory for building and maintaining a great relationships. So best dating strategy in the world, learn communication skills, learn effective communication skills, learn how to show interest, learn how to make connections happen, and learn how to build and maintain attraction for life. Communication skills will do that better than anything, just about anything else, you guys, okay? It's one of the number one things that I teach in my coaching practice is communication skills with other people. Because, surprise, relationships are about communicating with other people. Absolutely crucial. Okay, I'm going to turn on members-only chat. And we are going to go for a while here. Let me figure this out. Here we go. All right, my members. 
you guys support me, it's time for me to give you that connection back. So thank you so much. People with those green names, with that star, what questions do you have about dating? What questions do you have about that? A single life, loneliness, finding connection, communication. What do you guys have for me tonight? How can I help? What are you, what are you dealing with tonight? Share your stories. Love to hear from you guys. And if you want to become a member and get engaged right now with this community piece, become a member, support the channel. It's as little as $9.99 a month. You can continue helping support my work or up to the inner circle level. Whatever is good for you guys. Let me know. Members in here, what are your dating questions? What are you guys dealing with? Even just tell me about your dating life. I would love to get to know you guys a little bit more. I have a fear of turning 30 in a year. Is this a common fear you hear from women? Great question. Great question. Uh, yes, exceedingly often. Exceedingly often. Women fear the number 30. Um, red pill communities, which you guys have heard me talk against quite a bit. Red pill communities call it the wall. I don't necessarily believe in the wall, but it is the point where you know, fertility gets more difficult. The research shows that. Not impossible, but more difficult. Um, things start to change. You start to look a little bit different. You definitely feel some urgency, right? Biological clock happens for a lot of women at that point. It is not like you are 30 and dead, right? So red pill communities, you're 30, you are the hereby dead and no one will ever speak to you again. No, it's not quite like that. It's not at all. But, um, yes, very, very common for women at 30, around 30 to feel a growing urgency. You are not, by all me, any means, gone and dead. You have not expired. Uh, there are a tremendous number of men in their 30s, mid-30s, late 30s, looking for a woman right there in that window, okay? Tremendous number of men looking for women in that window to build a family together. So, no. It's not like they talk about on the internet. Not quite. How and when do you recommend discussing insecurities with a partner? Um, good question. Kayla, um, clarify for me. Are you talking about a brand new dating partner? Like somebody that you're just dating who wouldn't be really technically a partner yet, maybe? Uh, versus somebody you're in a relationship with. So are you asking me like how far into an established relationship? Is that what we're talking about? Or are we talking about the uh, like at the dating table first two, three dates? Archeon, did your wife give me? Not yet. No baby yet. We're going to have that. The due date was last night. Um, we will find out. We're waiting on pins and needles. I could get a text any moment. <laughs> we'll find out. Thank you for asking. Uh, one of my rougher days realizing I was alone, but okay. Now, I'm sorry to hear that, Hawk. I'm sorry to hear that. I hope that you're doing okay. You said you're doing okay now. Um, you need people around you. You need more people around you. I'm glad you're always here for these. It's always good to interact with you. Gatsby, I heard it called Dirty 30. That's what I mean. Right? You're 30, pew, you're dead. Okay, goodbye. Like, that's, that's that's what a lot of red pill circles will still say. No, it's not quite the case. There's a lot of men in their 30s who are now looking to get married. So it depends. What are you looking for? Okay, what are you looking for now? Arkean, I totally get where you're coming from. Adam knows that I'm also afraid of turning 30. I'm not even a woman. Also true. 30 is a time of great urgency for a lot of people. I'm not 20 anymore. I'm moving ahead. What am I doing? Have I firmed up plans yet? That's really refreshing to read. There you go. Yeah, 30 is, it's a turning point for a lot of people. Hawk, heading off to my church group in 30. Love to hear that you got some community there, Hawk. That is excellent. Wonderful, wonderful news. Wonderful news. I'm glad you're still connecting with them. Very good. Especially during these winter months, you guys, right? Winter months are very, very important to have that social connection. Vital, 30 can be an awesome time of life. It's more of a kickoff than a wrap up. Yeah, it shouldn't be a wrap up. You're not dead at 30. Okay, it is definitely a time to get yourself in order. It is definitely a time if you have, if you're approaching 30, wrap, wrap up loose ends, start learning skills, start making decisions, and start moving ahead into the path of life that you're going to follow. Okay, that's what 30 is. And that's why it's intimidating. That's why a lot of people come to me in coaching in their early 30s. A lot of people come to me in coaching in their early 30s to try to get it right, to set the trajectory for the next 50, 60 years. 
Dark, the only thing you should really think about is between ages 30 and 35 might be when you want to have a kid. You can have a kid at any age after 35. There tends to be issues. It, it definitely goes up. There's definitely an, uh, an increase in, in challenges for some people, many people. Um, it's definitely a good time to lock in what you want and with whom. Definitely true. Definitely true. I have a lot of women come to me for help with that, right? I am 30. I am making sure I can find a good partner. I do not want to be 35 or 40 or 45 and not found them yet. So help me find and, and locate and attract and connect with the right person, right? Very common. You guys need that? Let me know. Kayla, I'll toss that back to you. Would it be wise to intentionally talk about those on the first few dates? I think as more established partners, you might have an idea of your partners and securities. Would it be wise to wait? You know, um, I recommend sharing some challenges, some red flags that you are working on around the third date, around the third date. Okay. Maybe the fourth, if you have like rapid fire dates back to back to back, but start being a little bit more real with them while talking about what you're doing to address it. Right. Not, oh, I have crippling insecurity. Everything is over and I'm just miserable. And you're going to have to deal with that. Probably not the right move. Hey, you know what? I'm going to let you know, sometimes I overthink things. There's that, that, that tendency. Sometimes I uh, I get anxious in relationships. It's something I'm working on. I'm taking this course, doing coaching with this handsome attachment specialist online, right? I'm doing this work. I have taken diligent steps. I'm continuing to do so. I am telling you for accountability and also because it could affect you. If you see it, here's what I recommend. Tell me, tell me about it. I will fix it. I will step in and handle it myself. You don't have to worry about that right? Turn your red flag into a green flag. Talk about that earlier on, share that and be proactive about it. Good way to do it. Uh, deeper insecurities, more specific ones. You can bring that up again later. Hey, you remember I talked about that. Here's an insecure point for me. Again, I'm working on it. Um, here's how this could, this could change things. Here's, here's some help I could use as my partner. Could you do this for me? By the way, while we're on the subject, what can I do for you? What challenges do you have that I can help you with as your partner, right? Reciprocal care, reciprocal mutual fulfillment that way. Take care of each other. Build that relationship very, very intentionally, and it will fulfill you. It'll fulfill both of you. So don't shy away from sharing those challenging parts of yourself, right? If it's the right person, and if you are working on it, then it can work. It's the ones you don't work on that you're just like, hey, you know, this is just me. Sorry, it sucks. You're going to have to deal with it. That's a challenge I have with other people who teach about attachment online. A lot of them just kind of learn about it really quick. Then they go and start teaching about it. And they say, this is your attachment style. Like, this is your astrology sign. You can never be changed. You're just going to have to live with this. And then people suck that up. And then they take it into the relationships and say, well, I'm an avoidant and you're going to have to live with this. And here's how you need to start treating me. And right. And, and I'm an anxious person. Here's how it's going to live and, and things like that. And no, you can change. So just keep that in mind, you guys. If you want to change your attachment style, remember that the attachment specialist has told you you can change your attachment style. You're not stuck forever. That's the easy out, it seems. Well, you know. If it's permanent, you don't have to fix it. You can demand from other people. Vital, I don't really date as much as attraction sneaks up on me. Ah, this has made it tricky to have first, second, third date conversations. I find timing difficult. Any guidance? Um, attraction sneaks up on you. So you get into relationships and then begin developing attraction for friends, it sounds like, or something like that. Um, first, second, third date conversations. I find timing difficult. I would say if the attraction does sneak up on you, um, the first, second, third date relationship conversations that you have, like I talked about, and you know, have those with friends. They are great things to drop in with friends. You don't have to say, are you looking for a committed relationship? Because I am, but you can mention and you could be open with what you're looking for. You can also, here's a cool thing, you can also have those new conversations if you do go into a romantic setting with somebody. You could say, hey, you know what? We've known each other a little while, but we haven't known each other in this way. Why don't we start the relationship over a little bit and have the conversations we could have had if we had just met, right? Play that game. Have that conversation together. Build that relationship that way. Build that dynamic. Go back. Couples. Couples right now, people who might be married, people who are in a long-term relationship, right? If you're out there right now, I know you are, do this with your partner. 
hey, you know what? I think we might have missed some conversations. Let's go back and have those conversations, and then let's build forward what they mean for us today. Let's do that, right? Pick up a book on new relationship questions. Schedule a session with me. Adam, what, set, what questions should we have asked, right? I do premarital coaching all the time with people. Adam, what questions should we ask before we get married? Here's a list. Here's some specific things that you should be asking and checking to see where you guys are at. Have those conversations, okay? The goal is not to find that you're not compatible and to break up. The goal is to find the places where you maybe aren't sure, you haven't talked about it, you're just not clear, and then to figure out how you can work together to get clarity and then what you can build together. You will be surprised how often you are compatible with that person as long as you have the conversations in time before resentment builds, before destruction happens in the relationship, okay? Huge important thing that you need to be doing with your partner. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much to my members. Thank you to my new members. Thank you for supporting the channel. I really appreciate you guys. Everybody else out there, please consider becoming a member and supporting the channel. It makes a big difference. It helps me continue this work, and we are doing this together. So thank you. I appreciate that. I am going to take off, go spend some time with my pregnant wife, check in on her, help with the house a little bit. This is something you do when you're in a good, secure relationship. So modeling that, right? Thank you for being here tonight. Everybody else watching after this, please don't hesitate to drop comments. I love hearing from you guys. If you want to support the channel, become a member. Thank you so much. Keep in mind, my New Year New Me sale is only going until January 31st. So if you're looking for single coaching at 30% off, you want the Attachment Bootcamp video course at 20% off, check those out. I will drop that in a comment pinned to this right after this. So you'll find it right there. You'll find the link. Thank you, everybody. Take care of yourselves. Hawk, good luck at your group tonight. Vital, thank you for being here. Everybody else, thank you so much. I appreciate you and good night.